Hello, uh, welcome. My name is Mike Carlo. I'm uh, one of the owner or er, uh, organizers for the Power BI User Group in Milwaukee Brew City, and I'll and we're going to start our event here in the next two minutes or so. We're just getting started here. Um, Chris Wagner is with us, and he'll be presenting tonight. Uh, I'll kick it over here to Seth here real quick. Let yeah, him. hi, hi, I'm Seth <laughs> Bauer. <laughs> here you go. There it is. Welcome. <laughs> I'm uh, one of the uh, owners and runners. Uh, owners. Uh, oh wow. Yeah. Welcome to the Power BI User Group, Seth. Uh, <laughs> been running it for uh, quite some time here. Uh, excited to have our first online-only event. Uh, I know it's been asked for uh, many times, and all it took was COVID to make it happen. Uh, so uh, we are excited to have you join us, uh, whether that's live right now or in the future uh, in the video recording that we're doing. Uh, and we're excited to have Chris join us today. Uh, I'm also with Mike in Power BI MVP uh, and spend a lot of time in the community uh, doing a lot of fun things related to the Power BI user group. Uh, speaking, blogging, and uh, pontificating, right? Dropping, dropping answers on the community site uh, a lot. So uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. So I'm going to kick it over here to Chris as well. He's on here as, as well. We're doing our intro. So this is Chris. Hello, Chris. Welcome. Uh, you know, give a, maybe a, a brief just hello here to the audience. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Wagner. I'm an analytics architect at Rockwell Automation and uh, recent uh, Microsoft Data Platform MVP recipient. So Welcome excited to, to be club. presenting here. Yeah, yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm surprised you finally would allow me in. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we had some words. We said these guys, you got to let this guy in. He's a good guy. He's, he's trying hard. <clears throat> he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> So Chris is going to be our speaker tonight. Uh, I'm going to walk through a couple of slides here real quick as we kind of get going here. Um, the the forum here is pretty loosey goosey. Uh, we're not going to do anything too tight. Um, we're not going to be real organized. I mean, we have an agenda with us, but the idea is, you know, kick questions back to us. Um, Seth and I will be monitoring the questions. So as you um, think of things, or if you have questions around the topic today, um, please feel free to enter in the Q and A area and just you know throw in your question or make a comment. Uh, I'll be grooming the questions down and then we'll be um, asking them to Chris as we kind of get through things. So, and with that, I will go full screen with the presentation here and just click through a couple slides here, just real quick, kicking things off. Things about the community I want you guys to know about. So, here's tonight. Tonight, our agenda, we're going to go some highlighting some upcoming events. Um, there's a new content call out. So I, I don't know if you've been following the Power BI Tips YouTube channel, but we've been hosting a ton of content recently around just great tools that are coming out into the, the marketplace. They've been there for a while. Some of them you know about, some of them you don't. So I was able to uh, kind of jump on some webinars with them and just do a bunch of really interesting webinars around these amazing tools. There's a feature coming up here in the next two to three months from now. I don't know exactly when it's going to land, but um, there are some webinars from, who was the guy's name? Chris? No, um, clicky, clicky, draggy, droppy. I'm, I'm, remember, I'm forgetting the name. Um, Christian Wade. Christian oh. Wade. So Christian Wade was saying, hey, um, there's a new feature coming out, and he just did a demo recently where there are now third-party integration tools that can be used in Power BI Desktop to help you um, performance tuning your DAX equations and then also help you modify the data model inside Power BI. And I'm thrilled for this new feature. So I, I can't wait for it to come out. So these tools are all the tools that are integrating with Power BI Desktop in the near future. So if you haven't seen the videos, don't worry. You'll probably need to see them later because eventually it'll be integrated into the tool. So, so you'd, you'd, and you say you're, you'd say you're, you're interested in talking more about that new content call out section, huh? Oh, I guess it's just <laughs> moving to the next slide, huh? Anyways, Chris will be doing our main presentation tonight. He's going to talk through what he's been doing at Rockwell uh, and how he's leading analytics at his company. And then, you know, feel free to ask questions throughout the entire event. But if you want, Q&A is available. Um, it should be open and live now. Feel free to uh, give a shout out. Actually, while we're doing this, if you want to, if you're attending and, and listening, feel free to let us know where you're calling in from either around the Milwaukee area or around the world. I don't know who else is out there. Um, Scott Stauffer joining us. Oh, Scott, welcome. 
<laughs> so That's Canada. We should uh, we should we should clip a couple. Uh, did anyone tweet this? I don't know if we tweeted the event actually. I did twice. That's Excellent. how Scott knows that we're here. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Representing the the Canadian group. All right, moving on to the next slide. Yeah, so just to highlight some of the upcoming events, um, I, I hope everybody is aware um, the Microsoft Business Application Summit was supposed to be. Nope, not in California. Remember, it was supposed to be Texas, nope, um, but Texas. due to unforeseen circumstances, <laughs> uh, it is now all online. Uh, the great thing about that for everybody is it's the same content or mostly the same content, um, but it's all free. So all you need to do is go over to the Microsoft Business Applications website and sign up and enjoy the full free day of uh, content that's coming through the Microsoft Business Application Summit. So that's uh, exciting. Also, I believe Chris has a, a presentation that he's doing that is similar, same to what you're getting a, a sneak peek and preview of tonight. So that's pretty cool. Uh, also, uh, we have the Power Platform World Tour events that are uh, still going on. There's a virtual Power Platform World event uh, on May 13th and 14th, uh, hosted, hosted by Dynamic Communities. Uh, they are charging 295 for that. And if you know of any others, uh, please post those in the chat so that we can uh, talk about those and bring those up uh, during our meeting this evening or this video. I think this is the event. Or maybe not. I don't remember. Uh, this, this is our website. The, the Power Platform. Yeah, they're, they're still showing that they want to do the, the Chicago in person. We'll see. Mike and I are supposed to be at that event. Kind of hope it goes and kind of kind of realizing it may not. So we'll we'll see what we'll see what happens. I'll brave COVID just for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get rid of that one. All right. Others. All right, moving here to this next slide. So this is a series I was referring to that I'm so jazzed about. A um, lot of great speakers, tons of great content. Um, so couple, these are the, the most recent videos we put out. DAC Studio, we got four sessions on that one. Just going through the nitty gritty of what is DAC Studio. There are two key developers in that one. Uh, Darren Gospel, who is, um, he's the guy who created the program. And then Marco Russo, who's uh, the uh, founder and owner of SQL BI. He also came in to talk to us about that. So they kind of juggled back and forth about you know, what is tabular? What is DAC Studio? How do I use it? Where would I use it? And then Marco goes in real depth in depth detail around how do I tune my model? How do I know where the extra data is coming from column by column? And then he also talks about performance qu query tuning, figuring out, okay, what is running slow in my data model? How do I know how to uh, performance tune a particular equation in DAX? Um, Darren goes through a full review of all the features in the part three. So I'd highly recommend checking out these videos. Um, you can snap a screenshot if you'd like down here below. I doubt you're going to type in this whole random thing. We do have a channel URL for it, but you can also go to youtube.com slash Power BI dot tips. <coughs> Power BI tips, sorry, no dot. And if you subscribe there, we're doing tons more uh, other webinars in this kind of vein, uh, getting interesting tools and people on board for um, continually helping you build better reports and do it faster. So make sure you like and subscribe for us and we'll continue putting out great content there as well. Here's so our one, speaker today. Yeah, oh, one, one thing to note right before we jump in and hand things over to Chris here, um, we uh, we will be answering questions as, as best we can uh, the way we normally do in our Power BI user groups. So this will be a dialogue, except we'll be talking and you'll be chatting via chat to us. Um, but during the presentation and, and as things progress, if there's something that's on your mind or you have a, a particular difficult problem that you want to ask us about, um, be sure to do that at any time. And Mike and I will you know keep track of that. Uh, along with any questions that you have uh, for Chris as as he gets going. So without further ado, uh, our speaker today is Chris Wagner. We're very excited to uh, have him. Ironically enough, the three of us are all kind of in the same geo, uh, the, the Milwaukee powerhouses of MVPs now. So welcome, welcome Chris uh, to uh, the MVP organization. Uh, not that I gave you the MVP because I didn't. <laughs> uh, that's all Microsoft's doing. Uh, <laughs> But I'll, I'll hand it over to you to uh, introduce yourself and uh, take it away. Sure, awesome. Thanks, thanks, Seth, Mike. Um, really appreciate the the opportunity to speak with you guys. 
uh, all the work you guys have been doing in the Power BI user group over all these years has has made a, a huge impact uh, on the community and um, uh, just the general knowledge that, that people have everywhere we go. So uh, you, you've really made my job a lot easier and I'm incredibly grateful for that. So um, uh, 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 my name is Chris Wagner. Just as a little bit of, uh, actually, we'll cut over to slides. Why don't we do that? All right. So, um, this is a presentation I ha had kind of put together after a lot of urging from Microsoft uh, when we when they saw us, a lot of the work that we were doing at Rockwell Automation and 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 the power that we were building and and driving through our community. Uh, so I kind of put this together for you know speaking to different Power BI user groups. Uh, they really liked it, but they said, "Hey, Chris, this is like an hour. We need you to just cut that down to 20 minutes for MBAS." So there's an edited version of this that I recorded earlier today that will be available as part of the MBAS uh, uh, conference. But you guys are going to get the like the full cream version of this uh, with all the fats and and all the content. Um, <laughs> So uh, we're not we're not chintzing on anything for you guys. All right. So um, uh, first check. Is this legible for people? Is it flipped or inverted? This no, we're good. So I see good. the text and is readable on the main screen. So we're good. OK, awesome. Um, so I got little macros to flip that around if necessary. Um, all right. Yeah, so I'm MVP analytics architect at Rockwell Automation. Uh, I've been a member of the Power BI Advisory Board for almost four years now. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that, Microsoft has a, an entire team that works with uh, analytics architects like myself at, at the largest companies all around the world in helping vet out the features that are going into Power BI over the next 12, 24 months. So it, in a similar way that you know, you work with your product teams to build out content and deliver on features. The Power BI team works with the, the people on the um, uh, client advisory board on the features that, that we're, we're going to want to see and roll out. So um, that's been something that I've been very excited to be a part of. Uh, number one, because it shows Microsoft's commitment to the community, commitment to the getting feedback from businesses and commitment from the from them to implementing the things that matter most to us as analytics engineers. Um, and I'm really excited because we had a, about three and a half years ago, we had this heated debate uh, inside the, the community about the need for those composite models, the, those, um, uh, the ability to build out uh, a centralized model and have people to be able to bring in and, and contribute data into that model, even if it wasn't part of it. Uh, at one point in time, there were, we had identified 80 different features that were necessary inside of Power BI and analysis services in order to make that a, a workable reality. And we are uh, incredibly, or I'm, I'm incredibly happy that it looks like this August, those composite models are finally going to be rolled out and made available to everyone. So that's a, a big, a, a big hit that uh, I think that the people on the the client advisory board really worked hard to uh, to drive home. So um, I'm also the founder of KratosBI.com. All the content that I'm going to show today is available for download out there. So uh, I'll send along some links for you guys as well. Awesome. All right. So when we think about building out a a, a world class community of practice, we kind of I look at these five different bullet points when it comes when it comes to building that out, right? How do we how do we address training and mastery? Un, how you can understand your organization for what's going to work best? How you can establish regular touch points to keep that message going, to keep these concepts and, and ideas fresh and addressing the ever changing needs of people? How you can focus on enablement and the power of partners? All right. Um, as we said at the start, if you guys have any questions or uh, want to delve into deeper or any specifics around any topic, please feel free to ask. Um, and if you're in a, a company that doesn't have a community practice or you're not necessarily the one who would be charged with building that out, I still encourage people to listen to this 
and start a community of practice. You don't have to necessarily be that owner of business intelligence or the owner of Power BI to build out a community of people that help each other work through things and solve problems. So um, you're going to see a lot of stuff in here. Honestly, I think this can apply to each and every one of us. And if this seems like a lot, that's fine. You know, what's the old saying? Like the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step start where you can start with what makes most sense with, to you and, and uh, move from there. So, all right, we're going to jump on to uh, training and mastery. All right, I break this down into two different pieces. One, which is the S curve of mastery. If you're not familiar with this, anytime someone is learning something new, they start off with a real low skill level. I, I call it, you start off at suck. Right, you know, you you introduce a new concept, a new idea, and you're it's foreign. You don't know how, what what they're talking about. It, it become it's something that's really disjointed from what you're working on, and you you really struggle with it until you reach that moment, that aha moment, where all of a sudden all those pieces start to fit together. Right, then you see this rapid growth of of understanding and knowledge until you start to re reach that level of mastery. Well, when it comes to Power BI and when it comes to um, uh, business intelligence solutions, I, I, I say it all the time, it's everyone's first day dealing with some problem, with some challenge, with some new feature. I mean, you know, Power BI doesn't make it any easier, right? They roll out new features every single month in the desktop. New features are coming into the service on a steady drumbeat. Right, keeping up with all those is, well, straight up, you shouldn't try to keep up with all of them. It's too much, right? Just use the stuff that's useful for you, but understand that everyone's going to be coming in with a, a different degrees of experience and that you're going to be helping people work through. And even if it's just as, as something as simple as the reason to write a DAX measure, right? The difference between some <laughs> and some X, right? All of these things are going to be new to people every single day help people along with that. Uh, God knows I need help with those things. And then as we're starting to think about teaching people and, and learning different things, be very mindful of creating environments that encourage people to go through the three different phases of learning, which is see, do, and teach. All right. Um, th these are the three pillars when it comes to learning any new skill. Do you, first, you want to go through and you want to watch an expert like uh, Mark or Seth here at one of these Power BI user groups go through and do something. Then you want to take that knowledge and you want you want to take it. You want to put it to action. You want to you want to start you know using what it is you learn. And then if you really want to cement that in, you want to take that knowledge and you want to share it to someone else. You want to walk through and explain to them. Oh, hey. Here's why you use some. Here's why you use some X. Or here's why you should use a bar, a stack bar chart in this situation versus a a pie chart or a donut chart. Right. Uh, running through those things is incredibly important for you. Right. Having this frame of mind of educating people and helping people out. Uh, and turning the focus away from like what it is that you're doing into helping people deliver uh, the work that they're trying to do is one of the, the key pieces of building out a strong community of practice. So I, I always start here anytime I'm talking about how do we do analytics, how do, how do we build out that, that community, right? All right. Um, and, and now, you know, I kind of touched on this, but it's really important as you look at building out that community of practice is that you understand the type of organization that you're working on. Understand who the key players are. Understand, um, you know, the organization that you're at, right? Um, if you have an executive sponsor that is incredibly useful and beneficial for you to tap into them and get them to partner with you on these things to get you to help drive it through, um, Microsoft has defined all of these, you know, this is straight out of the, uh, Microsoft has a great deck on, on building out community practice that I'm really just taking and enhancing from. Um, th this is one of those key slides, right? What's your BI strategy? 
address any technical issues or challenges, and then you know planning. The key here, though, that I, I like to drive home is that identifying who's that sponsor, who is it inside your organization that's pushing for analytics. All right. Um, and then the next piece that we talk about is uh, make sure that you really understand what it is your deployment model is, right? Now, this is something that uh, a lot of people use innately, but they don't necessarily think of it inside of these three concrete pillars. Um, and these three concrete pillars can really help you understand the, the environment, understand how you should be working and relating with the, with your users, with your builders, and, and working with uh, within IT, right? So this model really comes with, um, uh, we talk about like a business-led self-service BI, which is everything business intelligence is driven by the business. It's the people that are working and operating out in the business. And then the other side of it is that corporate centric BI team, like that BI team that runs and owns every little aspect of, of business intelligence and doesn't allow anything to go out unless it it goes through the, you know, uh, comes through their hallowed halls, right? Um, and classically, business intelligence really fell under that corporate BI structure, right? I mean, it wasn't really until Power BI and a little bit on the Tableau side were these tools and these capabilities extended out into business areas. And this is where we start to see this um, uh, this more kind of blended approach, which is becoming incredibly powerful, where we um, we use IT to create and manage the infrastructure and set up uh, boundaries, but really enables the business users to do what they're doing. I like to think of this approach as I call it the analytics highway, right? You know, we pave the road so you can go on as fast as you, you can. We, we enable you to go as fast and as far as you want to go. All we really try to do is we try to create a boundary on one side, which is for security. So you're not inadvertently sharing all of your, you know, PII, PHI information out, you know, to the world. And then another boundary when it comes to, you don't want people to be able to impact other people's work. Like, oops, I accidentally wrote some, wrote over someone's, you know, report or deleted it or dropped it. You, you want to make sure that people aren't interfering with each other and creating you know, security issues. Beyond that, you want to enable people to run and go as fast as they can, right? Now, you can go tons more into this, but understanding of how this is working inside your organization can really help you when it comes to building out that community of practice, right? I mean, if you have a, uh, I don't know, a draconian corporate BI team that, you know, uh, must bless everything that that goes out. You know, you have to be a little more cautious in, in trying to build out a community than if you have a, a full-fledged self-service. You know, hey, let's let's get in there and do whatever we want to do type of, of framework, right? Um, but understanding this can can really help you in shaping your organization, um, and then making sure as part of that you understand where you're operating under this governance model when it comes to the content that's built out inside of Power BI, right? So uh, up on the top would be that highly governed, you know, corporate, you know, IT driven uh, uh, reporting space, right? Way up here. And then down here would be those individual reports, you know, that, um, you know, John from accounting wants to put together a new spreadsheet to look into a specific product. Awesome, great, we want to enable that, you know, for John. Um, you know, understand understanding the pathway that, you know, John and others in the organization can use to drive that analytics to move up throughout that organization is important, right? Um, John from accounting may come up with some insights that shift and change the way your organization works and behaves. Um, I saw this firsthand when I worked at Associated Bank. We built out a, a similar self-service model and a guy on a weekend sat down and was playing inside of Excel, 
uh, connected in through Power Query into some data sets that we had for him. And he uncovered that the division he was in had been unprofitable for like five and a half years uh, due to one thing and one thing only. They changed one tiny little piece of their business practices and that business organization went from unprofitable to profitable the next quarter. They, they continue to drive sales and they started to make money. That's all by extending out these capabilities to people. So it's really important and really powerful to when we can enable this inside your organization. But he never would have been able to draw, you know, the important piece there is be able to drive that up through the organization so that those insights can be leveraged and used by the entire company. All right. And then inside your organization, you're going to have your own champions. They're going to be people inside your company that love data, right? And whatever it is they do, what, whatever or piece of the organization they're in, we want to find ways to go out and encourage them as part of your center of excellence to take part in the work that you're doing, um, to help run those team sites, to help organize those events, to help you know with the you know the pieces that we're going to be going into to next because most companies do not have someone. In fact, Rockwell's got I don't know, like 23,000 employees, and I'm not even, you know, we don't even have anyone dedicated full time to our community of, uh, of excellence, right? Um, this is always going to be a part time gig, and you're going to need to be able to, you know, share that workload with other people. Building out that center of excellence and finding those champions inside your organization can not only help you, but help promote the, the, the great work of individuals inside your company. And uh, I say it all the time, you know, the, the more you can shift the focus away from what you're doing into how you can help others, you know, you help make them successful and that in turn almost always comes back to help make your life uh, more rewarding and, and enriching, right? Um, uh, one, of our, our, one of the coolest things I've seen recently is we found uh, a young, you know, a young gentleman like almost right out of college. He got started working inside the Power Platform. Uh, he was working in Power Automate and he figured out how to automate the work of an entire division. This entire division of like 15, 20 people, they spent 80% of their time doing for the last decade, doing all of this really manual process that was very time intensive and really pulled them away from all their value added work. Well, he came in and, and over the course of six months, he automated all of that, th that manual effort, allowing that organization to focus in on their, their, their highest value add contributions. So him coming out and, and showing people how he did that inside of our, our community practice really helped you know kick up um, uh, kick it up a, a notch and, and improve the uh, the work of everyone at Rockwell um, and uh, the next piece that I think of is like how do you establish the regular touch points right because while there's some people who work on this full time, if you're a data analyst, you know, this is your day to day job. You're always dealing with these challenges, always dealing with new things that are coming up. So it's important to have. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> step back. Uh, so if you do it all the time, you're working in this all the time, you're always churning through this. There are lots of people who only do data and analytics sometimes, right? Oh, it's the first of the month. They've got to build out a report or two. They've got to answer a question or two. But then the rest of the month, they, they spend working on other things, right? It's key to, as part of your community practice, create a channel um, to touch base with people on a monthly basis, right? Talk with people about the new features that are available inside of Power BI, uh, running through that, that demo that they put out every month and talking about the, the, the biggest features that you find important um, can really help increase that knowledge. Um, inside your monthly user group, go through and talk about the projects that you're working on, the challenges that you're facing, um, the successes that you've had. Uh, you may find out that you know you're in team A and you're working on this big sales challenge, uh, but this other person in team Z Z plural Z, he's working on the exact same problem. Well, 
but he, you know, he maybe he's coming from it from a different point of view. You know, maybe you guys joining forces can really help, you know, make that solution better, make it easier to roll out and reduce duplication on things, right? Um, monthly user group is awesome. Uh, I'm going to skip down to the daily articles, videos, and blog posts, uh, and we'll come back to Power Hours in a second. Um, but having a slow trickle feed of all the new things that are out there and different solutions that you're running into can really help create that sense of excitement and engagement for the people inside your community. So one of the big things that, that I do is anytime someone asks me a question where I have to go out to Power BI Tips or I have to go out to SQL BI or I have to go out to a website to like, go, oh, hey, here's a blog you have to, to read or write about. I'll send that off to that user, but then I'll also post it into our, our team site and say, hey, this is a really great article um, and just give people a little bit of a background as to uh, not just the technical capabilities of that, that feature, but the business context of why it's important or, or why people were needed to know that piece or why you should be engaged with that. That can really help people with the whole adoption and understanding of like, hey, these problems aren't too difficult. These are things that we can work through. We can can resolve ourselves. Um, and then the big thing that we, we started at, at Rockwell Automation is something we call power hours. And power hours are a defined period of time. They're uh, because we're a global company with people working in Power BI all across the world. Uh, we hold them Fridays from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. And we basically, it's a community where we all come together and we work through the challenges that people are facing, right? Um, it's pretty late on a Friday night for, you know, people in Asia and people in uh, 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 Europe. Uh, so we kind of give them priority to, you know, get back to their families and stuff like that. But it's an incredible community where we get to sit down and talk about the things that are, uh, that we're, we're challenged with, the, the struggles that we're having, and the power comes in that, all right, if someone asks for a Power BI question, often I can solve their problem in uh, just a few minutes. But if someone comes in and they're looking for help on uh, Power Automate or uh, Power Apps, I'm not your guy, all right? I, I don't know anything really about these things. Um, but someone in the audience and someone inside of our that community does know, and they they they're able to speak up, and everyone at, who attends the session is able to to learn from you know the challenge that the, someone is facing and the solution that that people had. So um, really highly recommend it. You set it up in teams. You identify a few champions to run as hosts. Um, it, it works out really well. Try to time box your questions and, and your, your solutions to like a five to 15 minutes tops. You don't want people to get bored or get disengaged and, and drop off. Um, but you'll find that because so many people are, are, are new into these platforms, that a lot of the times people just need that five minutes to like get them off of you know step one with an issue before they can move on. Um, if you're doing teams, if you have a more challenging issue, you can, you know, create a create a separate. We have a separate channels for Power Apps and Power Automate, where people just do an instant median meeting, jump into that, walk through the issue that they're having, and then uh, come back into the the main program. That's been incredibly successful for us. I mean, our our first Power Hours kickoff, uh, we had uh, over 600 people were in attendance for it. We ended up doing it. Um, but so many people were signing up for it. We brought in, you know, Microsoft flew in and uh, we basically had a mini conference at Rockwell because of it. Um, if you are able to get hundreds of people together for your uh, a similar type of kickoff, please uh, make sure you've let your Microsoft rep know they will definitively help you out and support you through that event. So, um, you know, having those regular touch points is important. <sighs> Additionally, when people are working inside this space, one of the big things we want to make sure that we're doing is um, we're, we're focusing in on how we can enable things and make them easier for people. So this is a document that I, I publish at Rockwell, um, and I highlight all of the features that are exist inside the, of the Power BI solution. And we talk about all of the new things or the things that aren't in heavy use and maybe should be, right? Um, 
So if you have premium capacities at your company, you're going to always be juggling, you know, the demand for premium is way up here and you're available for premium is almost always way down here. So the number of people who can work and operate inside premium, there's always going to be a disconnect. So performance is always going to be something you're going to be, you know, struggling with and running with. Helping people make sure that they understand the various ways you can solve challenges can really help with that. Uh, for example, we had a large number of people at Rockwell uh, who were, you know, what are doing Power BI, and so every so you know every problem that came along was a Power BI problem, uh, you know, and so they solved it with Power BI. And the reality was they had they had left Excel off the table and they had left paginated reports off the table, and that just meant that they were like you know square holing a round peg or a round holing a square peg, whatever it is, right? They were they were using the wrong solution f for the job. Helping people understand that there are there are you know these other solutions you can use Excel you can use paginated reports really helps helps them out right. Um, just recently we turned on XMLA read write endpoints on all of our premium instances, so we we made sure that everyone was aware of that. We did a brief little trainings. We showed a few champions on some rundowns on how to do those things to show how that would work out, and other features. Again focusing on enablement of the work that people are doing, helping them get more features available and aware of the features that are in the service. All right. The other thing you can do to help help, you know, just make people ensure that the reports and the content that people are building out is great right off the bat is make sure that you have a few common things that are available for them, right? Um, uh, Power BI Tips has some excellent theme generators out there. Um, I've got some content that. Uh, woo woo! Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, really, you know, you, the theme generator at Power BI Tips is second to none. It is just incredible. Uh, if you haven't checked it out recently, you should 100% go out and do that. Uh, also, check out their scrims. That stuff can really having those standard backgrounds can really help build that stuff out. Uh, I have some lesser versions on my website. Um, I'll do a small plug there, but theirs is a little better. Hey, Chris, we can we can get them on the site, man. Send them <laughs> over. We'll launch them on tips. All right, all right, all right. Send, send them on over. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, making sure that these resources are easily available to people and customized for your organization. You know, if you take a little time to just set it up, add in those marketing, you know, colors, add in your logos, add in, um, you know, the, the pieces of information that are, are, are key to your organization and making that generally available can really help people, The for, you know, right out of the gates, those reports that they build out, know that they just pop and that they look great, right? Um, and by going out of your way to, to take a little bit of time to add those out there can really ensure that the people, what people are getting is, you know, in line with your corporate standards and, and looks great right out of the bat. It becomes really encouraging for people. And then when you share things, let's use the tools that we have at our disposal to share it, right? At Rockwell, we provide all of our guidance and all of our sharing. We do all of that through a Power BI uh, uh, app. So we have uh, our, our um, uh, all of our COP has, has an app and anyone who has a Power BI Pro license who's building out content has access to this. We have trainings that walk them through the various resources that are out there. And as new features become available inside of Power BI, we build them out inside this app and we share these with people and walk them through and, and show them how this can be done. We, we give them the PBX files, we give them the DAX files, you know, we give them all that content so that they can see how that they can leverage this themselves, right? The entire point of this is bringing it all together so it becomes easy for people to get access to it and easy for people to use it, right? Don't try to make this stuff more complex than it needs to be, especially when you think about those, those people who are there on day one, you have to figure out how you can onboard them as easily as possible. And these are some of the biggest keys of that. All right, and then uh, the last, but but definitively not not the least of this is building out that community and connecting people in inside your organization, uh, inside 
inside that community that you have of people who are into data, who want and know and love this stuff, right? Connecting those people, because uh, I don't know about you, but I've worked in some large companies and I could not tell you the names of the people two rows of cubes down from me. I just don't know who they are, right? You know, there, there could be some real big, huge players inside the anal data and analytics space that are just down the all hall from you that you may have no idea about. Bring people together, you know, through lunch and learns, through your monthly user groups, through power hours, something along those lines. Get those people connected, find those champions, help promote them and make, you know, make connections inside of places. Um, I've even heard of some companies having great luck with mentors. Uh, that's something I haven't really tried before. I don't know if anyone uh, ha has done that in the community. I would love to hear how your mentorship program works, um, uh, but that's something I've been kind of tinkering with, um, but also connect people with and point them to these Power BI user groups that are out there, right? Uh, I think there's, what, does anyone know what the number is? I thought I saw 257 user groups across the world, right? Um, I'll go Google it, see if I can get it for you quick, but that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there is a large number of Power BI user groups out there, right? So um, even if you can't make these, you know, you know uh, Mike and Seth's Power BI user groups, um, you know, there's one in Green Bay, there's one in Madison, there's some in the Twin Cities, you know, they, they have them all over the place. And now that everyone's going virtual, it is so easy to attend these meetings wherever you know wherever you're from I, I think i saw someone wasn't someone from canada on this call i mean that's yes. insane we do we have someone from canada wow this has gone international how exciting <laughs> i don't know if we can meet in the microsoft office anymore i think we've outgrown it already yeah 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 <laughs> it's hard to hard to cram the countries in like that uh, um uh but but point these communities out, share when they're available. I mean, uh, the the number of points that the number of places you can now go to get and get connected with people in the community working on these things is incredible. And just because, you know, you know, I hope that this is useful for everyone here, but if you see this topic and you're like, ah, I don't know about that, go to another Power BI user group. You can now, it's so easy to attend the one in Seattle or the one in Florida or wherever get on those Twitter feeds, find out where they are, and if the topic's interesting, attend those meetings, all right? And don't forget about Microsoft. Microsoft is, especially the Power BI team, is incredible when it comes to reaching out and working with the community on helping people out. Uh, you, If you're not on Twitter, like, uh, that, that hive of villainy uh, that is Twitter, I had to get on there because, well, to connect with a lot of these people that, you know, inside of, of Microsoft, you know, they're they're out on Twitter, uh, they're out on LinkedIn, they're out on social media. If you have questions, you have challenges, uh, I'm not guaranteed they're going to respond, but you can connect, you can ask some questions. And I can't tell you how many of those people have, have responded, have helped out with different things over the years. I mean, uh, you, you know, some of these guys have been working and building out uh, you know, their own personal blogs for 10, 15, 20, 20 years building on stuff. Um, so, you know, don't forget about Microsoft. And then uh, last but not least, also make sure that inside your community, you're connecting people with the partners, you know, your gold partners that are helping you meet the needs and, and build out solutions, right? Um, uh, you know, Seth and Mike run consulting companies, you know, that are, are you guys gold partners? No. So, no? We, so I run a, I run a, uh, consulting firm. Seth actually works for a very large, awesome organization. So he's a director. Oh, excellent. Um, but inside these, co these communities, you're going to get John from accounting who did that great job on that one metric. It's going to come in and he's like, okay, now I'm tasked with building out a central business intelligence platform with a data warehouse and data bricks. I, it, it's way, going to be way over John from accounting's head. <laughs> and that's where you're going to need to be able to connect, you know, John to a Seth or a Mike of this world and say, hey, you know what? These are two guys I trust. You know, 
what you're what you're trying to bite off here is is way beyond what you're going to be able to to consume. Uh, either think about how you can pair it back, and here are a couple strategies to pair it back to something more reasonable. Or here are two guys that you should talk with about you know funding and bringing them in to do some work for you, right? Uh, but ha helping people connect to those partners is really important because straight up. There is an infinite demand for data and analytics in this world, and there is limited resources. You can't take them all. You'd need help from your community. You need help from your partners. And sometimes you got to pay for some consultants to come in and help you through and get over some hurdles, right? Helping people realize that, realize them that they're at that point in time uh, early in their journey can really help save them a whole bunch of time money and and wasted effort all right uh i guess i am uh, running really hot and fast here so i have uh, uh reaching the end of uh the presentation what questions do you guys have for me so um I, there's a there's a good one from alex and it, it kind of dovetails into uh, a couple that i have kind of re revolving around um, opening the channel channel for discussion, right? So Alex's question is, how do you help coworkers get past the soul crushing experience of DAX? <laughs> Which is a much better question than I could ask. But. Soul crushing indeed. <laughs> is it soul crushing? <laughs> it's yeah. not that bad, is it? I mean, it's Excel it's formulas on steroids, right? Uh, they, that's what you hear in the marketing materials. So, so Aww. I would. <laughs> I, I would say there's definitely a steeper learning curve there, and um, there's a oh. number of light bulbs that have come on for me as I've been engaging and just working with it. Because simple things like sums and counts, you get it. But really, yeah. when you understand filter context, dude, your world opens up. So I would, you know, for my guidance and what I would say for that area, I mean, I would definitely recommend you uh, reach out to go find some good training. I, um, Marco Russo's trainings is really good. There's a ton of them online. Take some of his intro classes. It'll give you a good kind of like baseline of where you need to be. And there's a ton of really good books out there too. Yeah, so definitively the books, like having the books is really important, but also walking people through and, and taking people through baby steps through DAX, because it is just Excel formulas on steroids, but learning how to do a calculate, learning when you do a filter, learning when you should, you know, use, you know, year to date or same period last year or same, what, what's the other one? Oh, whatever it is, right? Like learning how you can look up and understand and, you know, teaching people how to learn decks, I, I think is, is important, right? Because like, I don't know all of them, but I know how to go out to SQLBI.com and, and look them up, right? I know if I type in DAX statement and then what I'm trying to do, and when the Google comes up with the results and one of them SQLBI.com, if I open up that one, I'm going to figure it out, right? Um, I'm going to throw in two really good recommendation of books that I thoroughly enjoy. This is Phil Seamark's book. Uh, his first one is Beginning DAX with Power BI. And it's written from a SQL perspective, and I highly recommend the book. It's it's super good. Um, uh, Seth and I personally know Phil. And he's a rock star. I mean, he le legitimately is an expert in his field. Um, very brilliant. And he has a second book here that I'm also going to get you the link to. This so is the, his the second book. So was the data out of the week last week? The data got of speed. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got a second book out there, Pro DAX with Power BI. So again, he keeps going further down this DAX route, and he has some other authors with him to help him build, write that book. But again, I would r highly recommend those books. Um, and if I turn on my camera here, I'll show you. I think your camera's been on. Well, if I turn on my camera and send it live, <laughs> I'll see if I can well, show oh, you the book. I've only had the pleasure of seeing you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, your camera keeps moving. We we kind of saw them. Uh, there we go. How can you wait buy, a minute? You buy them by the case? I got a whole stack of them. So <laughs> when we do another user group, if you show up to an event when we can ever have one again, we'll give out some more of these books and we'll, we'll, we can pick up some of these books. But again, I highly recommend the books. And you, yes, I'm in pajama pants. So <laughs> sorry, it's after hours. 
So um, uh, another question that came through that I, I know Mike and I could talk about for a long time, but from Alper, definitely not from the Power BI team. He has uh, a question. What are what are some difficulties you have working with report themes? Well, so uh, one of the biggest difficulties I had in working with report themes was making sure that when you'd apply a theme, it would look right in all of the visuals that you could be having. It's why I created the, actually why I created the Kratos BI visuals PBX, which all it is, is all of the standard Power BI visuals all on one page, all using common measures, all kind of laid out nicely so that I could go through and as I built out a theme, I could just apply it, test it, see what it looked like, and then if I didn't like it, change it accordingly um, because you can become incredibly detailed and specific inside your report themes. And now what these guys have done out on, on, on Power BI Tips makes the theming a lot easier. But um, if you ever have to get into that JSON, going in and making those nitty gritty changes, uh, you really need to pay attention to all of you know, all of the different visuals inside of Power BI and, and, and what it looks like. I will say the biggest pain in the rear has been the random KPI cards that, well, not the random ones, but the ones we used to we would use on a regular basis across the top of a report that when you when people would build it in dark mode where it'd be a dark background and they'd use white and then you'd apply a theme that had you know uh, the text values had to be a specific. Uh, shade of black or shade of blue or specific dark color and then you'd end up washing it out on the back the dark background but that that was my biggest issues and how I solved it so uh I, I will say I will say one one of the biggest I, I think challenges um that I've seen which is, is kind of disappointing is the the transition even though and the, I know that I know why this right there's two different teams but when when you build a theme in a report file I think there's a probably a significant fall off in dashboard usage because you you lose all of your formatting and themes from a report to a dashboard and you don't have the same capability to have um, that continuity between building something that's highly customized in terms of the report and the theme and you know everything and you can't translate that into the dashboard so by extension it's kind of like a separate piece that that is really disjointed if if, if you use uh, things like that um to 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 chris's point you know obviously power bi tips has has a theme generator and a theme tool um which which we're putting in quite a quite a bit of work on lately haven't we mike I was trying to jump in for, for that one. Uh, so so I, shameless plug here, Seth, you teed it up perfectly. Um, stay tuned, like, like in the next, I'm hoping the next couple of weeks, um, we're coming out with a big enhancement to the theme generator. Uh, I think you all will love it. Uh, so I will, I'm not gonna leave any more than that. It's gonna be a big change <laughs> for us, um, but I think I think it'll be a very pleasant surprise and, and welcome change to the community. Uh, but again, it, it's, there's a lot of people doing really good things with colors and color themes. The tool is purely to make sure you don't have to write any bit of JSON at all. Uh, and as we keep thinking through versions of the tool and getting feedback from our kind of our key users and some other MVPs, we're continually iterating on the idea to try and make it more robust, easier to use, and, and more helpful to get the right visual combination styles together so you can build a better report. So yeah. stay tuned, there's more stuff coming. I, I think the, the, if if I could sum it up right, the the challenge with themes is is you're presenting business users with JSON, right? Like ultimately, like that's the file they have to interact with. No okay. um, the, the improvements uh, within the tool within the last what four six months or whatever when they when they release yeah. the new version of that is extremely helpful. I've been using the, the fact that I can easily extract my current customized theme as I'm even tweaking it in the Power BI file night and day difference in terms of um, just a user not wanting to use a separate tool and and the tool itself that allows me to you know have that back and forth without all of the I'm going to try to rip it out of a zip file or you know something to that effect so um, it, I, all, all up it's JSON you know there's tools and, and hopefully we'll have something that makes the easy button in, in regards to um, all it but especially with the the current the current company I'm with, um, 
one of the biggest things I'd love to see in themes is a, an increase or a way in which to build in supported custom fonts. Uh, yeah. This is hugely important from uh, an embedded scenario standpoint where an application is going to have its own hugely customized application, like all the fonts, you know, so even where I'm at currently, everything's in Montserrat and yeah. I have to choose only from a limited set of fonts that are like you, you're pigeonholed into that very small subset that isn't going to integrate the way that you want to in an enterprise environment. And when you're launching Power BI and scale for clients, especially it that that's a key part that's just missing across the board is, is that support because I'd love for it to just fit into what is currently built for external facing clients and I don't have that. Yeah, you know about the cheat, right? Um, tried it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, you can you can fudge in, you know, and try to try to get certain fonts to light up. Um, the 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 complexity around that is, depending on what machine or how it's running, it has to have that font loaded and everything with everything. Every time I've tried it, I just get that default behavior where it rolls back into um, uh, the default uh, font, and I I, I certainly can't bank on a production level client yeah. facing report falling yeah, into yeah, a default yeah, yeah. font, right? <laughs> yeah, there, it's hacky and it's incredibly limited and it's a huge pain in the neck. Um, so, so um, Chris, Chris, one question I had, like kind of related to that, like the serious DAX one, but it, like in your weekly power hours, are, are there some some big challenges or like that keep coming up from new users or, or repeated things that that over and over um, you're having to address in those? Yeah, um, but it's almost well, it's it's all incredibly basic and it's in, uh, very specific to Rockwell's infrastructure and how they have it deployed and all of our enterprise data sources and how do I connect to the lake, right? Um, oh, OK, well, we'll show you how to connect to the lake, right? Um, even though there's videos and there's documents, I get it. It's hard to find so people don't understand what to do and well, frankly, it's kind of fun and easy to come to power hours. So people come and they ask these questions and you know, we, we just help them run through those things too. So um, we're also being a larger company. We are blessed with one thing that if you have the means, I, oh, I do recommend uh, if you have a, a, a documentation or a, a, a tech writer uh, available, ooh, uh, we have a tech writer who will um, uh, who goes through the power because we record each one. They go through each one and catalog all the issues that we talk about and it's available through search. Uh, you know, so you can search through and find an issue, you know, exact and you know, she, she's <laughs> Jill is awesome. She'll document the times and ranges that we talk about so people can go right in and find those and reuse that content. So um, she sits on each call kind of documents when in each and you know each conversation starts and stops and it's just ah oh, it's 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 a huge time saver for me because as an analytics architect there's 1300 people across the globe that are building out power bi reports at rockwell like i used to get calls at you know two in the morning eight o'clock at night you know uh 24 7 trying to answer some of these you know basic questions but by channeling everyone, all, you know, like I don't answer questions outside of power hours, basically. Um, and by having those recorded and, and having those searchable, you know, we're able to, you know, have those, you know, those those answers are available to people, you know, 24 seven all around the globe. So what what platform are you using? For that teams search index? So every oh, the, all well, uh, oh, it's she has a shared document out on SharePoint, so you know, you okay. can search for it and it just comes up. Got it. I do He's, not know what she does. She is her magic tech writer yeah. voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, another another good question, uh, kind of in the partners section of, of champions from, from Alex. Uh, Chris, what are the biggest things that organizations should look for in the activity logs so that they know what growth looks like and how to find those champions to help them throw fuel on the fire for their content? Well, that's a great question. Uh, 
we we actually monitor our our premium usage and the so we track who's who's publishing reports who's using reports who's accessing reports um that can that really helps us in identifying uh, champions that we may not have heard of in the community um but uh the biggest thing is not through the logs it's through word of mouth where when we meet with people at power hours and people brag about, you know, uh, John in accounting, John is incredible. You should see John's stuff. And we reach out to, you know, talk with John and see how things are going, see what John's doing. And so, so you would say it's almost a, a mechanism of the the channels that you guys have developed in Rockwell that is is kind of the facilitator for finding those individuals as opposed to looking at you know raw metrics of what people are doing within the system. Yeah, there's yes, there's much of that. Yeah, in fact, we mostly use the logs to find the offenders, not the champions. <laughs> yeah, so. Do you do you do you find um, in in those power hours it, it, like you you mentioned that users are coming in for specific questions and things are are they just using that as the easy button uh, in in helping them navigate uh, certain certain elements of where they can find things uh, or or are you ever hit up with more challenging like deep report questions within that framework? So the great the great thing is we actually. Uh, it is the entire spectrum. In fact, when we'll go really deep on some of the topics and um, we have to be very careful because for a few sessions, we went deep, deep, deep for like two hours and we, we almost scared off a lot of the novice, you know, the new people who are coming in trying to learn something. Yeah. And we had to like purposely sprinkle in like, hey, no, some sometimes we don't have to go super deep on how you leverage a role-playing dimension with a time-based series you know um you know we don't have to go that deep into your modeling and dax writing uh, all the time let's run through some more some simpler things right Let, let's make it easier for people to get in on board right yeah because because one of the things that, that interests me and it kind of a lead into this question is um it, it sounds like you've you've identified areas where you've gone too deep and started losing audience. How do you keep things right to, to keep people engaged and, and in those power hours? Oh, so so it it's it's work, right? We we try to be very mindful and we, we try to be very broad and thinking about the people who are listening and the things that are going on. So we, we never have just, well, we knock on wood, never, but uh, we try not to have just a singular person running or leading the power hours. We try to have uh, like myself and one or two other people that will help facilitate and answer questions so that, you know, uh, frankly, if it's getting boring for me or boring for, 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 for someone, you know, that, that's, that's when we, we, we try to like jump in and say, okay, hey, maybe we need to like time box this or take this aside and, and and address some of these other questions. But we we do a very similar thing to what we have going in the live Q&A is where we, we have people put those questions into the Q&A so that there's always a backlog of questions and we'll we'll kind of go through and we'll, okay, you know, here's an easy one, here's a hard one, and we'll, we'll rotate through those. Great so, question. So, so is that a, is that a Q&A that happens during the power hour or is it a pre, pre, kind of built things so that the people answering all the questions are are kind of leading in and directing where the power hour goes. So, so uh, we don't take, we specifically don't take questions ahead of time because we've had people try to monopolize uh, <laughs> uh, the session um, and we, we stop that flat, right? So it's like, okay, hey, you know, this is this sounds like a great question. Thank you for sending me ahead of time. I'm going to think about this before we, you know, because it's complex. Um, but make sure you show up to power hours. Make sure you ask that question. Then, uh, no, I won't answer your question now. I'm, uh, I'm I have other work yeah. to do, right? Um, and we 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 do hold to that pretty strictly. Uh, we've had people that have joined. Oh, then they got pulled off to a meeting and then they come back like, I'm sorry, I had to drop off. Can you just quick answer this? Like, no, nope. next week, you know, I, I'm I'm not paid to like, you know, our investment in community support there is those that two hours of time. We take that incredibly seriously. 
uh, but we just can't do that outside of that space. So not that we don't make exceptions here and there, but right. generally speaking, uh, yeah, you're, you got to be in the, <laughs> in the power hours to get a question answered. So you have to be so, present to win. <laughs> there's, another, there's another great question that came in here from Dan uh, asking you, mm -hmm. again, I think this is an open question and I'm probably going to throw my two cents in here first and then kick it over to you, Chris, to see what you're thinking on this too. Uh, and we talked a little bit about centralizing your location and Chris, I think you mentioned um, centralizing all your information into like a SharePoint location. So you have a SharePoint site. That's kind of where all your information lives. And the question is, you mentioned me a documenting your power hours with a tech writer for future FAQs. What other tools slash ways do you help knock down that level one level one support with repetitive questions? So I ran a call center call center for about five years, and in that time, uh, it literally bombarded me with a ton of questions, just everything under the sun. So what I quickly realized is I don't want to answer every question directly with an email. So if, as you have an email inbox for those questions, you want to give people a way of asking or answering those questions. You as an expert or as the center of excellence employees, how you want to frame that, right? Shared responsibility across the team members. You want to get everyone to contribute to that knowledge base, but never answer an email. Always put the FAQ on some public facing or internal facing um, site. And believe it or not, this is actually how I started Johnson Controls down the Power BI path. Um, and really, really early on, I was building Power BI tips as my initial center of excellence for Johnson Controls. So I started the website purely around answering individual questions. Someone asked me, how do I load an Excel file? I would build a blog around it and then I would publish it. So my methodology was, if people are asking me this question internal to my organization, likely people are going to ask the same question globally. And so that's how literally verbatim, like the center of excellence of, you know, it wasn't called that at the time, but it's a web blog. But I just kept answering question over question over question. And that's kind of how this thing grew into this massive thing is now kind of this really neat collaborative community thing that is Power BI Tips. So that's how I started the website. And Chris, maybe you can speak to what you guys specifically do inside Rockwell. So uh, we've been using SharePoint for a long time. We've begun the process of integrating that into Microsoft Teams. And our tech writer has started to, uh, one of the first, <laughs> she was our first adopter and user of the new uh, virtual agents tool. Uh, for and you know, for people to be able through a live chat, ask a question and have a bot just answers it. Um, she's begun to take her documents and her answers and her facts and add those into that into us. You know, she's she's structuring them in such a way that the virtual agent is now able to look at those and respond to questions. So uh, that's actually a preview. If you're at Rockwell, you don't even know about this yet, but. Um, uh, we're, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Surprise! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're You're getting this soon. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Um, but it, uh, honestly, like, there's ten of us who get questions, and we have you know this uh, like copy paste response to all of these questions. Like, it's documented here. Here's the link to these like I don't know thirty or forty different questions that we get asked all at the same time. In the exact same thing that you were talking about, Mike. Like. Yep. Uh, I'm not going to write this out over and over again. We've got nope. a link. Here it is. Never, uh, ever we'll answer the same question twice. Always, always write the answer down, document it yep. somewhere. And if you are going to answer the email, answer it with a link to where the answer is, because that teaches people how to know where the knowledge base is. And then as you continue answering things, they make, they'll make they try to go there first and start using that. Alex Powers just jumps in here. He goes, virtual agents eats FAQs for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, Alex, I, I love it. Uh, Alex they, is dead on. He's dead on. We, we, we need to uh, we need to create something that's similar to um, Google this. Are you familiar with this? Where you oh, basically yeah. you Let's take a, a really it. easy question of something, yeah. and yeah. You, you go on this Google this website and you type in the question, and then you send them the link. And when it goes there, it opens up a Google page and it like types in the question <laughs> into a Google browser. Like we need that for an internal organization, right? Like where it's like, how do I download Power BI Desktop? <laughs> like here. 
I'm, just, I'm dropping uh, it, the website's called Let Me Google This for You. Yeah, let me Google L M T T E F Y dot com. I'm dropping it in the chat window. And it's it's <laughs> typing it's your hilarious. question and you so send them good. a link and then it just shows a cursor going to Google, typing the phrase. So the, 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 the response there, right, is somebody's going to do that one time before they go to Google the next time with their question before, you know, coming <laughs> to you, like come to me with the hard stuff, right? <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, I have another question related to you know kind of the the channel for opening discussion right because um obviously power bi user group community you know mike and i and you even you know we're all active in a public community um what what is the what is the line between creating what you know you you have elements of within rockwell which is essentially a private community versus a, a public in um i i feel like there's probably you can leverage some of both uh, and I'm I'm interested in how you determined, you know, uh, is everything private at Rockwell, or are you leveraging some of the public as well? And, and does does that question make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, all the stuff that I had built out at Rockwell, I've built many other times in the past, and it was all behind a paywall, and that's what prevented me from getting an MVP. So, I had told Rockwell, you know, one of the big things that I'm going to be working on is anything that i'm documenting that's broadly and universally uh, uh you know makes sense for people to know and understand i'm doing that on you know you're going to ask me to do that beyond the 40 hours i'm working anyways so all of that work i'm going to do on my own site on my own time and on my own you know my own computer and i'm going to put that out on my website anything that's on your dime on your time I, you know that's specific to rockwell just just goes into the Rockwell site and the Rockwell content, right? And especially like things like power hours, people are bringing up reports and analytics and, and, and questions that, you know, it's, you, you couldn't do that in an open public forum like this, right? Like yep. we've got, yep. you know, protected sales numbers. There's information that just, you just cannot share, you know, broadly, right? That's why these communities need to be internal to your organizations. They can't be external. Um, that's why I actually haven't done a, a public power hours because I didn't want to inadvertently expose data from some other company someplace, right? Yeah, yeah, let me, let me, let me ask the, makes sense completely. Let me ask a, a little bit of a follow-up, right? Like uh, what, what's interesting to me is I think based on you know your presentation today and digging into you know the channels for opening up discussion that there's certainly a need especially in larger organizations where having the specific use case and being able to answer it in line there makes a ton of sense right mm -hmm. but i also like have this feeling that could you know leveraging the power bi community right where you have a, a forum that's much larger than anything an organization or your teams could support internally as a mechanism for the basics or even challenging DAX questions or whatnot. And I'm wondering, is that part of the solution in in your in Rockwell or is is it mostly just straight private? Oh, no, 100 percent. So th that's what that's why I said connecting people with the partners out there as part of my presentation. That's a big key, right? Like we're always we're sharing links out to blogs. We're sharing links to community sites We're we're always pointing people into these various directions. I mean, uh, you know, w when I'm solving a problem, uh, so, so I'm assigned. So I have to oversee 1300 developers, but I also take a special day job of focusing in on, I think it's 60 developers. 60 developers are, are what I work with all day, every day on getting that content out. Anything that I, they're asking me content, I mean, even 60 is a lot for one person, right? So anytime they ask me a question, if I respond and I point them to Power BI Tips or I point them to a community or, or point them out there to someplace else, I, I, not only do I, I share them and connect them with the outside world, but I also share that on our, our Yammer site or on our team site. And I point out, like I said, and provide the business context around why they should be reaching out and why they should be using this and 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 why this is a value add for the the the, the community. Great question, though. All right, looking at the questions, I'm kind of going through here. I don't see any new ones. I think we are kind of at a a good kind of closing point. So unless there's any other questions, uh, Seth or anyone else on 
the web, the live webinar. I'll give it a moment here too because it kind of lags a little bit. Yeah, while well, while other people are adding in questions. So one thing I will say though around this whole pageant reports thing, um, another gentleman who is a great MVP. His name is Matt Allington. Uh, awesome blogger. He's got a great blog and I dropped a couple URL links in here. He has this um, Power BI Premium for small businesses. And so what he goes and he walks through, how do you turn on Power BI Premium in the A SKUs? So an A SKU is the premium SKU that is a pausable hour by hour billable rate for a, a premium SKU. It's an Azure based SKU. Um, and so like IT departments or, or data teams or however you're going to, the team that owns Azure, has the ability of being able to light up a Power BI Premium and then pause it when they need when they need to. With with Azure, you also get scripting, so you can script when this premium turns on, when it turns off, and what level of A SKU you're in. So the Matt Allington article talks about scripts or using Flow Automation, ah, Power Automate now, I guess is what it's called, not Flow. <laughs> I'm still stuck in the old days. So it's it's, it's Power Automation. How you can then turn on the A SKU, run it for a period of time execute what jobs you need to in a premium status, and then you turn it back down. The same thing is applicable for data flows. So if you have a computed entity inside data flows, you can also turn on premium, do some computations and data flows, and then you can put the premium back down. The, the data will not update, but you will have access to all the data lake tables that are in blob storage. So you don't need data flows to be in premium for you to access the data from a data flow. Pretty interesting concept, but again, you can then optimize where the premiums used and when you need to use it based on your business need. Now, I believe right now the minimum A SKU that you need to get into Power BI Premium is you need a dedicated machine, and I think it's A3, but it, don't quote me on that. It might actually be an A4 Premium. So, from an equivalent standpoint, you have A1 through 8, A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you have a premium, a P1 SKU. And to make sure that we delineate those two, A's are billed hourly, the P SKUs are billed monthly, and the monthly P SKUs go through your Office 365 subscription. So there are two different billing mechanisms, um, and then the P SKUs are slightly a bit cheaper, but again, you can't turn them off until the end of the month. So you have to do it one month at a time. So anyways, that's kind of how all the, that those pieces work there, but you do have some options of being able to split up some automation, run the paginated pieces that you may need, send out those reports, and then turn it back down. A lot of that stuff is very bursty. It runs and then it's off. So you potentially can use some of that as your solution in your business if you need to. And if you need help automating it, call me up or call Seth up. <laughs> we'll help you automate it. So we'll, we'll write you some scripts and help you automate this stuff and get it in your environment. So um, before before we you know cut over to you know kind of an open Q and A, uh, I guess driving backwards into you know some of the the governance model, Chris, um, I, I'm interested. Uh, are what are what are some of the back end technologies that Rockwell is using to support the different levels of governance? Right, like you have the enterprise level where you have I'm sure developers you know building productionized reports for the enterprise and sharing to a much wider audience and then it kind of goes down the spectrum of which business users are using what 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 sort of infrastructure are you building at each of those levels so that um, the the appropriate slice you know has has the the, the data sets that they need uh, yeah that's a great question Seth uh, right now we really have three levels of uh, of consumers of Power BI. Uh, the first level that everyone's in is the Power BI consumer. So when you start Rockwell, everyone gets that free Power BI license. So you're able to go in, see all the various reports that are published and, and created. Um, everyone falls under that 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 creator license or that, that reader license. The next level is a personal content creator. Those are people who are able to who get a pro license, they're able to build out Power BI content and they're able to share to other Power BI Pro users, but they're not allowed to share beyond the analytics community. So they do not have, they can't share content out to those free users. So they have no access to uh, a Power BI premium environment. And then we have what we call our business unit content creators who build out content that is distributed broadly across their business unit. Only business unit content creators are allowed access into any of our Power BI Premium tenants, and they they do all of their sharing through the Power BI Premium tenants. Now, uh, I, I think we're going to be rolling out. Um, in fact, we've already done 
we've been running a, a, a PO, kind of a proof of concept over the last couple of years about an elevated group, which would be the an analysis services uh, business unit content creators, the people who are building out models that are so large uh, that they have to be running inside of analysis services. We are formalizing that uh, right now. And uh, each of our significant business units are going to start to have, uh, and I think that's like 10 to 20 uh, business units are going to start to have their, their premier or analysis services uh, teams that will be building out larger models for sharing across their, their business units. It's a, it's a it, it, the personal content creator is an, it's an interesting way. I haven't thought about that. You're actually controlling who, who they can share with based on premium, right? So yep. the free consumers, and, but you're restricting what somebody can actually share with outside people because the other outside people wouldn't have a license. Uh. Right. Um, in, in to take it into the back end, can, Mike, can I correct a question myself? here? Yeah, I want to yeah, yeah. correct myself here. Scott, you're on your point. You're on point, buddy. Scott corrected me. He goes, "Doesn't it go from A1 to A6?" You are in fact correct. It is an A1 to A6, and I at six, and I just logged into Power BI or Azure.com and looked for Power BI, and yes, it is an A1 through an A6. So that equates to an A5 is a P1, and an A6 is a P2. My bad. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm glad you clarified that right in the middle of this conversation. Ooh. I wanted to get it out before I forgot about it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an idiot. Ooh. Everyone else knows this except the teams would have deleted this meeting. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, man. sorry. No, it's not. It's fine, dude. It's fine. It, we, we're not professional, if anything, around here for sure. <laughs> It's not how we. It's not how we. We roll our pug. The the, yeah. the serious side of things. Um. So. So to, to take these three groups, do those correspond with three different data repositories or how do you break up the back end? Like, you know, is it SQL databases? Is it analysis services models? Is it CDM folders? Uh, is there a, a methodology to how you're doing that? Or is it kind of hodgepodge? Yep. No, so um, well, right now we have a, a Cloudera data lake. We're moving over to Snaps data lake, um, but the, the migrations and, and the access levels will be the same. Each business unit, or um, I'm sorry, each of the source systems are that are out there have access levels that they're available to. So, um, so across the board, you know, you might have, you know, the the personal content creators and the business unit content creators. They have different bands of what they can share to, but th you know, this group may have diff this level of access inside the data lake. This group has a different level of access, and and this group has a different level, right? So all controlled through AD groups, all based upon the subject matter, all based upon security levels um, that each team or teams should or should not have, right? Awesome, makes sense. Huh? Well, I think uh, we will we will let you off the hook if you want to <laughs> close out, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll hang on for any open other questions. If if people have wild things that they want to talk about in regards to Power BI, I don't know how wild we can get, but hey, um, Chris, if if you want to close out the presentation, by all means, uh, go ahead. Sure. Uh, and uh, if you uh, have an opportunity, I, I'm sharing on my screen right now. This is a presentation that I did. I got it. Uh, you got it? Yep, there we go. We got it up there. It's live. This is a presentation that I did today at the Narrative Sciences Data Storytelling Summit. Um, it's recorded. It will be live on Narrative Sciences. I'll have an edit that will be available on the website. Uh, the content's available on uh, my website as well, kratosbi.com. Uh, but it's a, it's a, a very fun look at uh, what we can learn from uh, Disney and specifically the Marvel MCU on data storytelling, uh, especially as we're at the one year anniversary of Endgame. I thought it was appropriate to delve deep into this, but this is a very fun presentation that I did earlier today. Um, it'll be out on their site and my site as well. So awesome. That is all I have. So, well, Chris, thank you very much for presenting at our uh, pug this month. Um, we, you being a member of our pug as well, you're the the first member I think outside of Steve that that has stepped up to the plate and uh, done presentations, and we look forward to you know maybe having some more from you in the future. Sure, uh, be happy to. <laughs> so for uh, everybody else on the call, uh, I think we'll we'll hang out a bit, and if you have any additional questions, uh, please let us you know 
type those in the chat. Uh, if we don't get anything within, you know, 10 minutes or so, we'll probably probably just sign off. But uh, for or start singing that... karaoke <laughs> <laughs> or, or something. But Watch anyway, everyone discon hey. disconnect. And Thank we're you. disconnecting. Yeah, right. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next month uh, at our pug then.